Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me again as we continue to unpack this one word. Why, God? Why? How can I make sense out of the nonsense of life? Now, today, we want to really look at the why. Why, God? allows things to happen. I have to be very careful here because we really don't know. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's what's called inexplicable. That's a good word. Drop that on somebody. Inexplicable, which means cannot be explained. And when it comes to why some things happen that are unfair, remember this week we talked about sometimes life is fair, sometimes life is unfair, sometimes life is greater than fair. But when it's unfair, we want to ask the question, God, why? In fact, there are two questions. Why? And the second question is, now that life is unfair, is how can I deal with it? Tomorrow, we'll close out this series looking at the how question. How can I deal with it? But uh, let's look at the why question. Why, God, do you allow, allow the inexplicable to happen? First of all, let's establish some important and a very important truth. And that is that God does not promise us isolation from pain. God does not call, promise us insulation from trouble. And God does not cause, call, uh, cause us to have exemption from hard times. You don't get, let me say it again, isolation from pain, insulation from trouble, and exemption from hard times. We will have pain. We will have trouble. We will have hard times. So, so be ready for it, be ready for it. But this is what a fellow by the name of Joseph learned. He had the inexplicable happen to him, 13 years of suffering caused by his brothers. He tried to do the right thing, bad things happened to him. He dreamed of his life going up and guess where his life, go it goes down. In fact, he's a prisoner because he's been falsely accused of rape in Egypt. And it's such an important story that, you know, the book of Genesis has 50 chapters and one fourth of the book of Genesis is committed to the story of Joseph. So it must be important if God made one fourth of the book of Genesis committed to the story of Joseph. His suffering is inexplicable. But he said something in Genesis chapter 50, once God blessed him and God's gonna bless him because uh, Joseph gets put in jail and after he gets put in jail for false rape, he meets somebody in jail who's, who is uh, uh, an employee of the king. And when the king had a dream that he could not interpret, he remembered that Joseph had the gift of interpreting dreams. G Joseph is brought out of jail, interprets the king's dream and the king is so impressed that he makes him second in command. And later, his brothers, who had, who had caused all of his problems in the first place, came back, went to Egypt because there was a famine. And the only place where food was available was in Egypt. And they went to Egypt. And Joseph basically saves the people who hurt him. They didn't know it was Joseph when he first went to Egypt. But he would later reveal, I'm Joseph. And uh, he saves them. And they are apologetic. They're up there apologizing to Joseph for what they did. And this is what Joseph said to them in Genesis 50 and verse 20. Don't you see, you planned evil against me, but God used those same plans for my good. I told you that God is in the business of recycling. God used the evil of those, that evil that was done. God used their evil for Joseph's good. Just like Breonna Taylor, the police shot her down, cruel, inhumane, but God used that evil for good to galvanize the world around the importance of, of police abuse, the issue of police abuse and police malfeasance and the importance of justice. God didn't cause the evil, but God has brought something good 
out of the evil. In fact, used the evil. This is what you have to know. And that is that everything that happens in life, I don't care what it is. Listen to me. Get this. It is for God's glory and for our good. God's glory. Somehow, God's going to get the glory out of the bad thing. When Moses is at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army is behind them, and the mountains uh, are on both sides of them. You remember that? Pi, one mountain range is called Pi High Hireth, and another is called Migdal. And they're between uh, Pharaoh's chariots, Pi High Hireth, Migdal, and the Red Sea, which means they're trapped. And that locates where somebody is. Somebody ask you where you are, tell them I'm between Migdal and Pi High Hireth. In other words, I'm in a trap situation. But what does God do? God sends an east wind and blows and the waters of the Red Sea part and they pass over on dry land. And Pharaoh's army gets drowned in that same water. And when they get to the other side, they start praising God. God gets glory because this is what you have to get, that everything that happens is for God's glory and for our good. Now, here's something else you got to get. Get this, for, my, for God's glory and my good, but get this, Whatever glorifies God will gratify you. Whoa, let me say that again. Whatever glorifies God will gratify you. So you want God to get the glory because if God gets the glory, you get the gratification. Always, it's always going to gratify you. And because God gets the glory out of what happens with Joseph's life, because Joseph comes out of jail, goes from the pit to the pinnacle, uh, from the penitentiary to the palace, uh, from down to being up. God gets the glory because God orchestrated it, used the evil for good. And what brings glory to God brings gratification to Joseph. And that's what the Bible teaches. Now, when Joseph says in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, look at it one more time. When Joseph says, don't you see you plan evil against me, but God, you, how did he know God used the same planes for good? How could he say that? Because Joseph was looking at things from God's perspective. And when things happen, we look at things from the human perspective because we're human, but we need to ask God for wisdom to see, ask God, let me see this from your perspective. Let me see why you are allowing this to happen. What is the greater good? How is this gonna bring glory to you and gratification to my life? Joseph could only say that because he's looking at it from God's perspective. One of the most one of my favorite stories, and I've told this at St. Stephen Matthews Church a trillion times. And let me say it to you because this is the first time some of you have ever heard it. It's a story about a man who has one horse and one son and a farm. And one day the farm, on the farm, the horse runs away and he needs the horse because he uses the horse for plowing. And his neighbors came over because they heard that he lost his only horse and the neighbor said, oh, it's a bad day. We heard that you lost your horse. And the man said, well, how do you know it's a bad day? Because all my days have not come in yet. Because the next day the horse came back to the farm, but the horse, which was a female horse, brought back with her a lot of wild horses. And now uh, the, the, the farmer is not just a farmer, he's a rancher. He's gone up another level. He's got a ranch, not just a farm, because he's got uh, horses. And those same neighbors who the earlier said it's a bad day because he lost his horse, they come back and they say, you know what? We heard it's a good day. You get all these horses. And the man said, well, how do you know it's a good day? All my days have not come in yet. Because the next day, his only son, you remember he had only one son, tried to ride one of those wild horses, was thrown from the horse and broke his leg and couldn't work on the farm. And the neighbors heard about how his son had broke his leg and they came back again and he said, we heard about your son, he's got his leg broke, it's a bad day. But the man said, well, how do you know it's a bad day? All my days have not come in yet. Because the next day, uh, the nation declared war, his nation on another nation, and they were looking for all the able-bodied young men they could find. They go to the man's house to recruit his son 
and they can't recruit him because he has a broken leg. In other words, it looked like a bad day when the horse left, and it looked like a bad day when the son, his son broke his leg. But you can't tell when it's a good day or a bad day until all your days come in. And it looked like it was a bad day when Joseph was betrayed by his brother. And it looked like a bad day when Joseph was put in jail and lied on uh, for a, a accusatory rape. But you can't tell when it's a good day and bad day until all your days come in. Because when all his days came in, he realized that he was now second in command over Egypt. And he could say in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20, he could say this, don't you see, you plan evil against me, but God used the same plans for my good. So when all his days came in, Joseph realized that what he thought was a bad day and another bad day and another bad day and another dead day, when all his days came in, he realized that he was in a good place, that it was working out for his good. Here's the takeaway for you. And that is, regardless of what you're going through right now, please know all your days are not in yet. You know, Jesus was betrayed by Judas, arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, condemned by Pontius Pilate, marched down the street naked and humiliated, hung up on a cross, suffered and died but all his days were not in. That took place on Friday. But when Sunday came, he was resurrected. You may be experiencing a Friday crucifixion, but all your days are not in yet. I don't know how the turnaround would be for Jesus. It was three days. It may be three months. It may be six months. It may, I don't know how long it's gonna be, but God is a God of the turnaround. And you keep telling yourself, don't let me give up because all my days are not in yet. Let's pray together. Lord, our God, thank you for your word and help us to truly believe that in the midst of life's most difficult, heartbreaking, spirit crushing experiences that you are with us, that you can turn uh, nonsense into sense and the evil that is bestowed upon us, you can use it for our good. Help us to trust you more. Touch somebody's heart who's really hurting right now. Help them to really believe that all their days are not in. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace and blessings to you. Thank you for being with me. Another powerful point to ponder. Now look, everybody needs a church home. Walk in obedience. Everybody needs to be baptized. If you have not been baptized, I don't care where you are, we can baptize you virtually. We're going to, just, we're going to hook you up with a church and we're going to hook you up and we'll baptize you virtually. Or if you want to go to a swimming pool and get a, we'll baptize you in a swimming pool. We'll baptize you in your bathtub. I don't care. But just as long as you go into that water, you need to be baptized and you need to be a part of a church. So contact us, New Start at SSCLive.org. We will get back with you. Peace and blessings, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. But until then, don't forget the protocol during COVID-19. Don't forget to stay safe, always stay sane, and stay masked. See you tomorrow.